All right, hello everyone. This is Phone a Friend News or PAF News um, with the Ambassadors of Gaming. I am one of your two hosts, Ambassador Chris. I'm Ambassador Michael. And this is basically, um, it's a very casual setting. As you can see, we don't have any studio. We don't have any sort of special lighting or anything. This is just us um, looking at news articles and then we're just going to talk about them. And feel free to leave comments. What, what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to spawn 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 discussion. You know, like that. That's all we want. You know, like we are all ambassadors of gaming. Every single one of us. You, me, Michael, the chicky next door. I don't even. There is no girl living next door. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Back to the point. Um, we are all gamers. You most likely would not be viewing this if you weren't a gamer. So feel free to talk with us. You know, we're not the highest authority on anything. So we're just going to talk about a few things that we find interesting and uh, see if you want to stick around. All right. Can so I like there? I'm going to pick up the... Oh, oh. Had some you are lying. We're good. <laughs> um, the first thing I want to talk about is... Our internet and... connection isn't professional either. What? I said our internet connection isn't professional either. No, it's specifically it's, yours. It's all casual here. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is AMD. AMD is the uh, company that makes the processors that go into the Xbox One and the PS4. Everything you love about those pretty graphics. Next yeah. generation chips, yeah. Processors. I might I might be wrong in the specific of what it does. It makes hardware for the consoles, but the uh, it, it's a, it's the heart of your console yeah. essentially. Think of it as that. It is the your console is impossible to run properly at all without it. Yeah. So mm, I'm trying to figure out the date, but anyways, the CEO of uh, AMD, Lisa Su, um, was at CES talking about just general things in their relationship with Sony and Microsoft, and what she had said is that there's going to be an opportunity in the upcoming life cycle for them to price drop. The exact quote here is, well, from the article from Tech Radar says, Lisa Su confirmed that there was going to be an opportunity in the current generation's life cycle to develop new technology that will allow for a price drop without impacting performance, which is important because you don't want to drop your performance for, you know, crappy cause. Um, and her, her words were, the consoles work on a five to seven year strategy. That's the lifetime for these consoles. Without talking about any particular party's console, there will be opportunities to cost reduce. So she went on to say, consoles tend to be very sensitive to price point. We see that as price comes down, console sales go up. And that will afford, not, and that will afford an opportunity to do that in this cycle. So what it sounds like is they're either going to move to a new chip that is cheaper to produce, or they are going to lower the price of the current chips now. I, I'm pretty confident it is going to be the former. Um, if, you, if any of you are up to date on your gaming history, you'll remember that uh, about midway toward the closer, I guess midway to about three quarters into the PS3's life cycle, the PS3 had a price drop because they replaced the chip in it and it was a lot cheaper to produce, however, it got rid of your backwards compatibility with your PS2 mm -hmm. games. So, I mean, most likely because backwards compatibility is already a really touchy topic right now with the current generation consoles, we can pretty much rely on uh, that's on whatever is happening to remain unchanged. You're still going to be able to stream those games or download those games on, on, the, on, uh, your, on your Microsoft console. And still gonna be able to do it on your Sony console as well. So hope that is most likely what's going to be what's happening. You'll just get a new chip, um, and basically the only thing you'll notice is on your box it'll say it's a different chip, basically. Yeah, or it'll be the quote-unquote slim. You know what I mean? Oh or yeah. Redesign some something like that because there were rumors got... that Sony was making a redesigned PS4, and then they did, but I don't think it ever came out in America. I think it only came out in the UK. There's Japan. nothing to be redesigned. It's small, like... The PS4 okay. is small. It is small, but... Alright, let's talk about this. Alright, I'm not getting all... Don't worry, I'm not going to get all the way I get. Um, I feel that there's a reason that they are consoles. Mm. Like, you know, we have our 3DS. Yeah. Like, that is, a, that is something designed to be moved. Um, I believe heavily in the fact that... Um, 
<clears throat> consoles really shouldn't be moved. If you have a console, you, you should try and keep it in one place. And then, so we go to the Xbox One. It's big. It's ginormous. I, I am an Xbox lover, but I will definitely admit that it is big. But they did their best. They made it black. And they made it, you know, pr- I guess you could say it's pretty non-noticeable. Hmm. It is big, yes. But it, is it supposed to be moved? No. The PS4, I think, is really small. I think the yeah. PS4 is a beautiful piece of engineering. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. The, that rhombus. whole, like, uh, um, the is that a rhombus? Yeah. I guess rhombus, it, yeah. yeah. Parallelogram it's design. It's They were able to take, uh, n- you know, it's not super curvy. It's not super flashy. It's just pretty. Just yeah. a nice thing to look at. What were we talking about? I totally got it. Oh, yeah, price drops. <laughs> price uh, drop or, and no, redesign. We, no, we were talking about the slim. Yeah. Um, I don't even think if they do redesign it, they might call it the slim. Is it really going to be slimmer? Probably not. It'll probably be just like a, if anything, like a, maybe an inch or like a few millimeters. Like, um, I do you remember the the 360 slim when it came out? It really wasn't. It was about the same size as the regular 360. It oh, just looked. Nice. It was I curved had in, wasn't it? It was like bent at an angle like that. Uh, or something. Yeah, it was more angular. Where the 360s uh, first iteration was more like uh, box. hourglass. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not too eager for the slims to come out. The slims would kind of justify me that it's getting old. I yeah. still like the excitement. I still like thinking of it as a next gen console, even though it's current generation. Yeah. I don't. I don't like to think of it as current gen because then I feel. I don't know. It, yeah, it just it loses was, some of its fun for me. That's like just me. This is the first time we've been adults, and there's been a shift in console change, where it's been like. I mean, sure, these these have brought Please like massive changes. Please excuse terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. They, they these didn't bring as many changes as the the last generation did. So it, it's weird for us to see the console life cycle as adults now, and to analyze it differently. Well, it, it's not just because we're adults too. Um, keep in mind, uh, the, the first Microsoft console, and I'm not saying its name because I'm worried that my Kinect will hear me in the background. <laughs> Um, Microsoft's first console, um, its internet was shut off, I believe, a month or two after the 360 was released. And I remember before I started this channel, before the their newest console, their Microsoft's newest console came out, I asked, are they going to do the same thing to the 360? And they said, absolutely not. Um, the generations are so different from then. I mean, the, the, the original Microsoft console was obsolete. It was... Yeah. Gonzo, it, it had it had no standing compared to the 360. Um, but life cycles of consoles definitely are stretching. It's just the problem is not many people want to develop for it. They would rather work on the next generation hardware as opposed to make sure a game works on the old hardware as well as the new. If we could just shimmy out that, do you like the hand motion? Yeah. Do you like that? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Um, if we could just, you know, move that out, then our games would definitely be way better detailed, you know, because we only, we don't have to worry about it working on the old, we just have to worry about work making it on the new. Um, but I'm digressing. Um, okay. Price drop. Price drop, slim consoles, redesign. Um... All right, I'm going to end on my thought of um, a lot of people already have the next gen um, or current gen now. But there's still a lot of people that don't, too. There are still a lot of people that don't, but the point I'm trying to make is that if this price drop happens, this is an, it's an, I, I hope that, you know, Microsoft and Sony have uh, corporate bigwigs that are much smarter than I am when it comes to crunching numbers and the people. Um, but my personal opinion, as just a, a, a lowly, non-business major um, is that I f- definitely think that if they dropped those console prices you would see a rush of those um, old console people get- taking that opportunity to upgrade well yeah uh, plus it helps a lot like when GameStop GameStop did deals too where they gave you like a lot of trading credit when you traded it in to get a new console oh yeah so I mean when they do that that helps too so I mean sometimes you have to work with retailers for it I mean, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But, like, Best Buy doesn't do trade-ins, so... 
and they're Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon. They all sell consoles too, but they don't do trade-ins. So, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad. I mean, the price drop would help because I one of my friends recently he was like, "Where can I get a cheap Xbox One?" And I was like, "Define cheap. Cheap as you're gonna find one's like three hundred, maybe two eighty mm-hmm. if you get a used one." Um, little off topic before we before we move on to the next subject. GameStop uh, has a deal where they give you all three of the current generation consoles, all certified refurbished. Um, PS4, a Microsoft you-know-what one, and a Sony PlayStation 4, all for $550. I believe that was the correct number. Was it 500 yeah, or 550 It was 570 I think. 570 Either way, it was like 620 I, would, after takes. I would like to point out that I bought my you my Microsoft console when it was brand new and it cost me five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. That's outrageous. Five hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Take the deal. Take the deal. Just do it. Moving on. Alright. All right. Okay. Next... Why don't go go for it. Okay. Go for it. Next thing I want to talk about is cause it it's it's common. Pokemon Tournament, they announced that they're gonna announce a new character. It's an announcement. For an announcement. So, it's an announcement? For an, for an announcement. announcement. So on the 15th of... Announception. Yes. On the 15th of January, they're going to add a new character. Where's Leo? Leo, Leo? I'm trying to interrupt you. Leo DiCaprio is supposed to come in here with guns now. It's an Inception joke. You were... Whatever. I, I don't care. I, I Just talk. talk. Anyways, so on, on January 15th, they're supposed to announce the new character for Pokemon Tournament. I'm assuming this character will be in um, the Wii U version when it comes out in June. At least that's what I've read on uh, GameStop. Because they did confirm that it's coming out on the Wii U. It's being made by Bandai Namco, who makes Tekken. Pokken. Uh, and they already added two characters since they launched the game in December. They added Skeptile and Shadow Mutant. Please excuse Mike's bad internet. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't show that bad in the recordings. That would be bad. Um, anyways, so they added two new characters since it came out. This will be the third. So, uh, they revealed it in 14, but it came out in December. So, and then it's coming out on the Wii U in June, from what I understand. And, let's see. Development of the project is being done by veteran producer Katsuhiro Harada. Okay, I didn't butcher, butcher the hell out of it. Uh, who says he, he goal for the game is to make it appeal to all Pokemon fans. And his quote is, whether you are a casual player, a regular player, or a hardcore player, anyone who likes Pokemon can have fun. So it seems like they're trying to balance out the level system, or the uh, the fighter, so that, that way you can kind of play as whoever. I mean, obviously there's going to be one or two that are more powerful than the rest. There's nothing but you can do about that. that. That's just always how it is. So, But I'm very excited. I'm hoping that new character ends up showing up in Pokemon Wii U. Very excited. It's probably... Let's hope that it doesn't become the touch of malice of Pokin. <laughs> yeah, if you don't use Destiny it. Destiny joke. It's bad. Destiny joke. We won't get into that though. No, not today. Um, um okay. I I think uh I have not played Pokin yet, obviously, because I do not live in Japan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was supposed to come out here in uh at Dave and Buster's, but I haven't heard shit about it. I went to Dave and Buster's probably about a month or two ago they didn't have it so yeah um i don't know i have mixed feelings about this i haven't seen enough of pokin to really uh to get the kind of hype for a particular character i i i find myself having trouble being hyped for a dlc when i don't even have the game yet i mean i'm assuming most likely when the game is released here i'm hoping that this character will just be added to the roster yeah i'm, I'm hoping, hoping that, that all the characters they've added are already in the game when we get it yeah I mean, if it's i'm hoping not, i don't really see the point do? in that we're gonna release this game and we got three characters for you to already microtransact yeah <laughs> 5.99 dollars each that's not really a bad price for a fighter i but... mean that's what smash bros characters are right Something like that. Uh, you get more than just a character. You get uh, you get whatever stage it's they're associated with. Hmm. Because I have every uh, stage and character on my uh, 3DS and Wii U version. I just never bought the Mii outfits. Yeah, Those are just, stupid. 
there's no point if you're not if you're not like big into them there's no point but i don't know i'm yeah. i'm waiting for it it looks really nice the game is pretty so from what i've seen of it yeah it looks pretty and it looks like it's gonna be fun um but i'm just not too hyped about another character um until i actually play the game yeah. once i once i play the game then yeah if they release dlc i'd be like oh sweet like yeah yeah i am i haven't looked at it but if i i'm assuming since it's being made by the people that make tekken it's gonna play more like tekken than smash bros oh so, of course so That's i'm interested even... to see how that works but they also want to make it like smash bros where anybody can play it and have fun so i feel like it's just gonna be kind of like a dumbed down version of tekken with pokemon on top of it it's it's hard to appeal to both crowds. People mm -hmm. want people want it to um people want to be able to be a pro at it though. Yeah. You know, like I'm sure there'll be tournaments, like people want to be pro at it. And that's what they go for in Smash too. You know, Smash has tournaments. That's the whole reason that when Brawl was released, they got rid of um Oh, I don't even remember what it was called. But if you were to jump and I believe slide or dash at the same time, you would do this kind of like sliding movement around the map. It was like it was considered a professional move. It was basically a glitch. Yeah. It was a glitch that was exploited. Um, um, I won't say it's a glitch. It's more like they start doing one move and then their button combinations cause it to be incompleted yeah. and start another move. Um, but they got rid of that in Brawl for that reason, yeah. so that um, it wouldn't be like, okay, this will. We just want everyone to be. We want everyone to have fun. We want everyone to be the casual player. But that's why um, people still do melee tournaments because not a lot of people like that. Yeah. Um, I personally like what uh, the ironically Pokemon games do. They have their ranked battle and they have their battle spot where they just have a. People battle spot. People just go into go in and just find someone to battle, you know, willy nilly. Um, and then they have ranked battle, which is when you go in and you're finding someone with you know legal Pokemon, um, and they're, they're they're there to win. They yeah. really are there to win. They're there to decimate you and crush your soul. Yeah, basically, and then laugh in your face. Um, but once again, I digress. I'm gonna. I'm going to save my hype for the DLC. And it's I'm just going to give out my hype for the actual game. Yeah. I'm excited. I think it's going to be the last hurrah, though, for the Wii U. Yeah, it'll be... Uh, the Wii U will no doubtedly go down in history as the worst selling console so far to date. It's up there. It's not the worst, but it's up there. I meant from Nintendo. Probably. Yeah. The Virtual Boy was, but um, considering that the Wii U was out for longer, it, they, they divide sales figure up usually by year. Yeah. Um, and for how long the Wii U was released versus how long the Virtual Boy was released, um, the Wii U sold less. So the Wii U for a Nintendo console. If you did not know what the Virtual Boy is, it, it was a failed Game Boy concept um, was that VR. was basically... Pardon? It was shitty VR. It was very terrible virtual reality. It was an awesome idea. Really, it was. On paper, it sounds great. But it was like this weird stand where you like put your head into it, and there was like a controller down here, and uh, it just caused it caused neck problems. It gave you headaches from the the rotating mirrors with the with the lights going everywhere. The, it only appeared in red. Yeah. For one, it had no color. It only appeared in red. But we're branching off. The point is, is that it really didn't do as well as as Nintendo hoped. They they wanted to, they definitely wanted to go for. Um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the word. Innovative, innovative. Yeah, they've always uh, tried to and do that. They and no one was biting. No one was biting. Um, we're branching off. Let us know what you think of Pokemon. You know, talk, please. Well, I, we're like lonely. I like I like I like Pokemon too. Somebody tell me they like Pokemon. It's anyway. only the two of us. Stop it. Okay. Moving on. All right. Okay. So here's... I'm going to lead into this with a small thing. So Oculus got a, um, finally announced their price point, and it's $600, which is a lot That's of money. That's a steal. 
All it, us gamers are rich. Yeah, but it's six hundred dollars. To be fair, it's not a completely. I think it's not completely bogus, because you do get the headset, the sensor, the controller, an Xbox One controller, a game, and there's one more thing. I think it's another game. I think you get two games with it. So it's not completely badly priced, but it's still expensive as hell. Um, but the big thing is they upped the minimum requirements for it. And I think t NVIDIA is a company that also makes chips and processors for um, computers. And they said I think only about 5% of the computers running NVIDIA right now can actually run VR. Like, so, that's yeah. not a lot. So anyways, they came out with a statement because they're coming out with a new program. And it's a VR ready. It's called VR ready. And it you can just buy these computers and they're quote unquote ready to to play VR. Which is a good idea. So anyways, here's here's the announcement from um, their general manager Jason Paul. It says for customers navigating an emerging technology like VR can be daunting. We're working with trusted partners worldwide to simplify the buying process with a GeForce GTX VR Ready Badge that will let customers quickly identify PCs or add-in cards that are capable of handing, handling the demands of VR. So they're setting the minimum requirements for its VR program at a GeForce GTX 970 for desktops and GTX 980 for notebooks. Um, you also need the equivalent of an I Intel Core i5 Four five nine zero processor, at least eight gigs of RAM, two USB ports running 3.0, an HDMI 1.3 port, and Windows 7 with Service Pack one or newer. Uh, okay, for all of for all of you folks that do not speak computer, who are just strictly console gamers like myself, um, like a that's a that's a it, it's 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 not a cheap computer. Mm -hmm. You, it, it's definitely. I mean, it's not the highest grade. Eight gigs of RAM isn't really that high grade, um, but it's definitely higher than your standard um, than your standard laptop. Hold on one second. I want to look something up here. Not GTZ GTX. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. One. It is a. Looks like a processor or a graphics card. Something like that. Anyways, the, the models I listed off are components for the computer. It's not the actual computer itself. So it says here in the article from Polygon, uh, for reference, the lowest model GTX 970 currently has a suggested retail of 320, 329, or 329.99. The GTX 980 goes for 40, Four ninety nine ninety nine, and the nine eighty Ti goes for six forty nine ninety nine, or it says you could always go for broke with the nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents Titan X. And I'm what like, a steal! <laughs> so, so, I mean, it really is cool, um, but they're just, I, it's just not. I don't want to blame them. I do not want to blame them because, um. You know, virtual reality isn't easy. No, it's, it's not easy at all. Another like system in it's itself. Oh, exactly. Um, and it makes sense that it's going to need some impressive hardware to make it run. Um, so I, I'm not exactly blaming them. It's just it's one of those situations where it's virtual reality isn't exactly a mainstream thing yet. Hmm. Uh, I'm sure maybe as if if it becomes popular. It, and when that happens, as it becomes more popular, these components, um, you know, it'll inspire more research. It'll, it'll be easier to develop, and it'll be easier to run, or at least the components necessary for running it will become cheaper in themselves. Yeah. Well, um, PCs, PC is always like their whole life cycle of a computer part is like three months. Like every three months, something new and better comes out. So I mean, probably within the next two years, you could probably get it relatively cheap plus oculus is going to go down in price once the other vr headset comes out uh vive psvr microsoft hololens like plus whatever off-brand ones come out that we just don't know about some companies probably making out there 
So oh, yeah. Eventually they'll go down in price, but for the first like year and a half, everything with new technology is a rich kid's game. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, you're kind of shit out of luck. That's just kind of how it goes. Go make friends with your local boy at school wearing a polo and short khakis. Okay. Yeah. That was a stereotypical rich kid joke. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be more funny, but Mike didn't even laugh. Okay. Um, one last tidbit. Oculus is now owned by Facebook. Thank yes. you. They got bought out by Next Facebook up. before they released this version. Between the release of their yeah. first version and this one. So... You just got scared by whatever horror game you're playing. Would you like to share it with your friends and family? <laughs> you can share all of your Steam achievements on Facebook. Would you like to do that? Basic. No, thank you. Would you like to share everything with Facebook? It's just going to be like Mark Zuckerberg staring at you in the face. <laughs> like, I am watching you. I know all. Facebook I Simulator am... 2016. It's like Lord Shax from Destiny, but in Oculus. I am the Oculus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, dumb jokes. And what's our what's our last topic? The last okay, topic. I, I actually I'm pretty interested in because it's weird. It uh, comes from VentureBeat, but they're citing Kotaku. So, this is rumor. This is speculation, but it's still interesting and fun to talk about. So the article reads that Kotaku has a bit of a streak when it comes to revealing details on Assassin's Creed games before Ubisoft announced them. Ubisoft, Ubisoft, however you want to say it. The site previously leaked information about Assassin's Creed Unity and Rogue and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now Kotaku says the next entry in the stealth action series is set in Egypt, uh, more notably that it says the game codenamed Empire won't come out this year, which would mark the first time since 2008 before Assassin's Creed 2 that Assassin's Creed didn't have a yearly release. So the rumor is that it's not that they're not coming out with Assassin's Creed this year, which would probably be good because, you know, Unity didn't do too well, and Syndicate's actually really fun. I played it. It's a good game, um, but Unity did not fare so well. It was really buggy. Got a lot of criticism, and I w I like that they're thinking about maybe going back in time a little bit further, because they've been progressively getting more and more. They'll bounce back and then they'll move forward again. So, yeah. but, but they never really move past like 1700s, 1800s for the, uh, for the actual assassins animus thing. Makes you wonder how far back this assassin line's going to go. Well, the original one is from, oh, fuck, I think it's like 880, maybe even earlier. It's set in Arabia. The original Assassin's Creed's uh, based over in there. Oh, wow. biblical times i think i'm not sure but um because i haven't played it in years i forget but i i think it's cool i i would actually like to see them take a break because i'm kind of getting tired of seeing assassin's creed every year um, i'd like to see assassin's I, creed I think, 5 that would be cool <laughs> i think i definitely think that um when it comes to a great game like assassin's creed um you ask almost any gamer, and they will tell you, yeah, they'll be bummed, and they might even be a little ticked off that the game isn't coming out soon. But at the same time, I feel like they'll be pumped to know that it's in the works. Yeah. And I feel like the longer it takes, just the better it's going to be, or at least a lot of us hope that. We can't, we can't know that for sure. None of us work yeah. at the inner workings of one of these game developing firms. If you do, leave a comment. I want to know. Let I want to know, know what goes on. Ubisoft. I close the doors. Um, the the thing about Assassin's Creed is that it... So they got shit about Unity, right? Because it didn't work and it had all these features and shit that they wanted to put into it, but they couldn't get it to work all together at the same time. And then they came out with Syndicate, which didn't have as many features, which, to be fair, were just kind of bullshit aesthetic features. Like, Unity had cl moving clouds and rain and shit like that. Yeah. So, like, in the game world, you could see clouds moving and shit like that. And that was part of the reason why the game didn't run so well. But then Syndicate, they took that out. And then people bitched about it. It was like, you bitched about it in the last game. Now you're bitching about it again in this game. Make up your mind. Which one do you want? You want clouds that move or you don't want clouds that move? Make your fucking choice. So, I think what they're trying to do is just kind of get back to... At least I'm hoping that they get back to... Let's just make a fucking Assassin's Creed game and just 
have it work and be fun because I think that's what they need to do because I'm kind of it gets old your internet is uh is dying does that you can thank time warner all right thank you time uh warner. yeah it's terrible oh, um no. okay well i am not a huge assassin's creed lover not that there's anything wrong with it it's just it just wasn't particularly my cup of tea mm -hmm. um but from the standpoint of great games, you know, it's sold so many copies. There have been so many different titles of Assassin's Creed. I'm willing to perfectly admit that it is a, a good game. It has to be a good game. It's just we're not all interested in the same thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's how it is. We're all different ambassadors. You know, the whole reason that we are ambassadors is because we – that is us showing our own point of view. You know, I like this game. You don't. That's Okay. That's fine. That's what makes us all different. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is that is definitely a that's going to be our last topic for today. But um, I want to talk about a word or a Latin phrase called quit pro quo, and what that basically means is it's it's Latin for that which means something for something or yeah. trade. Um, go ahead and leave a comment on any of the topics we discussed today and or tonight, and uh, in the beginning of our next stream. Or not stream recording. Yeah, I'm losing my words. The point I'm trying to make is in the beginning of our next uh, video, we will choose one of those comments and we'll comment on your comment. We'll talk about it. We won't shut you down. Do not be afraid. Anything you say can and will be talked about by us Ugh. on this web on this uh, on this web chat. Um, and uh, that was phone a friend. So. Bye, Michael. Okay, goodbye. And we will see you next time. Goodbye.